I am so pleased to announce that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. I took a course called Fundamentals of DSLR Photography taught by Justin Bridges and it helped a lot. It gave me just enough information to know what my buttons mean, but I wasn't so inundated by information that I forgot the first half of the class when I reached the end. But even if I had, there's an extremely helpful transcription so I could double down on what I was hearing. For instance, I now know that f-stop is referring to aperture. I never knew this before. I'd feel kind of dumb about that if I wasn't so busy feeling really smart right now. When I first looked at the courses, I found a lot that I'm interested in. If you're less certain about what is next for you, there are creative challenges and productivity classes that can help you structure your time and create achievable goals. This is 2020, the year that everything can and will go wrong. At a time when so many important conversations are happening in our world, your voice is more essential than ever. So explore the classes to unlock creativity for social good. Skillshare offers memberships with meaning, connect with the support of fellow creatives, and enter community of encouragement, communication, and inspiration. Whether you're looking to fend off boredom, focus on self-care through creativity, or join a similarly creative community, Skillshare is the place to keep you learning. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, and after that, it's only around $10 a month. So thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. <clears throat> Welcome back. I'm in a little bit of a different situation this time. I am not in the poop house. I'm actually at my parents' house. Well, technically I'm in their garage. Also, it's like 1.30 in the morning. Um, and this is what I have for a desk today. It's a table saw. I mean, it's kind of appropriate though. Anyways, um, I'm back again. Well, this is my channel, so I'm always here. This is, again, not a build video, so um, if you dislike these videos, just skip it. Just skip it. Or if you want to watch it and leave a stinky comment about how it's not a build video, you can do that too, because hey, more engagement for me. I've been trying to keep my house renovation videos free of voiceover for the most part, uh, so this is my opportunity to address any questions, comments, and definitely some concerns that everyone has. So let's get into it. A major concern for a lot of people was asbestos. There's no asbestos. There were a lot of questions as to why there was insulation in my little house in the desert. I think this comes from a common misconception, actually a couple common misconceptions. I'll start with the first one first. Misconception number one, a desert is a place that is hot all the time and probably covered in sand. When actually, the word desert is derived from the Latin desero, which means forsake or abandon. That means that the word that we use for that sandy place that is hot all the time is also from the root word that gives us deserted, as in there was no one there, the place was deserted. It has nothing to do with heat. Neither does insulation, but I'll get to that. A desert is a place that receives very low precipitation and is generally barren because it's inhospitable to plant life. So the Sahara, which means desert, is a desert but also so is most of Antarctica. But I digress. The reason there is insulation in the house is twofold. The first one, which is the one that everyone is worried about, is because in winter it snows. When I was a kid, my dad explained to me how insulation works. So we were going on a trip, not a very long trip, but we we're gonna be in the car for a couple hours. So it, there were two cold beverages that he wrapped in a coat and set on the floor of the car. And I remember saying to him, why are you trying to heat up our frosty beverages? 
I probably didn't say it like that. But actually, like thinking about the kind of kid I was, I maybe said it exactly like that. He explained to me that by wrapping the drinks in the coat, it would insulate it from the outside air and keep the cold air in, thus creating a temporary short-term cooler. Mind blown. We tend to think of insulation as the thing that keeps us warm, but actually, it comes from the Latin insula, island, which is the same root word that gives us the word isolate. In fact, isolate used to be an archaic term for to make into an island. How cool is that? So in summation, to isolate does not mean to keep warm. It means to isolate the air, whether it is hot or cold. So it'll keep you warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer. Win-win. You should reuse your insulation. No, I will not be reusing any of my insulation, nor should I. I appreciate the fact that on the screen, it might look like the insulation is fine. And a lot of people were very adamant about the fact that it was fine and I should reuse it. It's not fine. It's disgusting. I know because I was there. You're so overdressed for insulation removal. This was really interesting to me because internet people have a lot of opinions about PPE, but it's usually the lack thereof. I mean, if you want to use loud machinery all day and not wear earmuffs, that's your own prerogative. I don't agree with it, but whatever. Do your thing. Fill your boots. This is the first time that I was yelled at for being overprotective. First of all, that's not a thing. Second of all, mind your business. I am a compulsive scratcher. It gets actually a problem. So if I get any bit of insulation like, on my skin, I will scratch until I bleed. Also, my house, my rental house, is 30 minutes away from the poop house which means that at the end of a long day, which I've been sweaty and covered in insulation, I would then have to get into my car and sit in my car seat and then shed fibers of insulation on it for future Jess to be itchy? I don't think so. Your sweat bag is ridiculous. And there we have it. Half of the people praised me for looking after my own health and the other half snorted derisively at me being so dumb. <laughs> I did the suit up for the fiberglass insulation, but I did a full suit up for the mold situation. And that is because... Less than 10 square feet of mold warrants, quote, minimum PPE, N95 respirator, goggles, gloves, and disposable clothes. Disposable clothes. I had much more mold than that. Um, because it's so dry in the desert, I decided against like a full face shield helmet with air circulation. Um, but I did go for the Tyvek bodysuit because I knew that would protect me. I also used duct tape to seal the ankles. This is not an ankle. The ankles and wrists of, of my suit um, so that nothing would creep in. As per a recommendation, I even went as far to tape up the ventilation on my goggles so that the air wouldn't come in. This meant I was better protected against mold, but also it meant that sweat would just continually collect within the goggles. So it's like when you're swimming and you're wearing that mask and water gets in and it just, you know, fun times. I don't have running water at my house yet, so there was no way that I could even clean myself off before getting in my car and driving home. So it's actually quite sensible and not even a little bit ridiculous. Also side note, um, if you're ever looking to lose five pounds like in a day, sweat bag's the way to go. It's very effective. Mold removal. I've always heard that bleach kills mold, and it does, but through a little bit of research on the internets, the internets, I read that uh, bleach kills mold on non-porous surfaces, but vinegar kills mold on porous surfaces. So rather than spray the entire place down with bleach, I 
suited up in my $20 cotton coveralls that I got from the little boy section of Target and I sprayed vinegar all over my house. I'm really glad I wore goggles because man does vinegar sting your eyes. I filmed all of it but I didn't include it in the original phase two video because I wasn't 100% sure of the efficacy of vinegar battling mold. And I didn't really want to take a pause in the video to discuss it. I had a few criticisms about how slow I worked, but if you've never removed moldy drywall in weather that is 100 degrees Fahrenheit and 38 degrees Celsius, while wearing a non-breathable sweat bag, then you don't really have the right to judge how fast I work. If you have both logic and imagination, then you can surmise that the faster you work, the hotter and sweatier you'll be. I'm not interested in getting heat stroke, especially since I'm out there by myself. Work smarter, not faster. I am, however, confident that once I remove the portions of the wall that still hold mold, then I will have a fresh, mold-free poop house. You need to wear a helmet. The worst thing that could have fallen on my head, besides a dead thing, was a fake wood panel. And that would have been unpleasant, but it would not have been dangerous. They're not very heavy, and while it <laughs> would have startled me, um, I wouldn't have been hurt by it. More embarrassed. If the structure itself had been unstable, I would have worn a helmet or a hard hat, because you don't want things falling on your head. But in this case, it didn't seem like that big of a deal. I did think about it. I think about these things. You must wear boots because you will step on a nail. The last time that I stepped on a nail, I was five. I was barefoot at the time, and our neighbors had to take us to the hospital because we didn't have a car. Uh, the doctor was super impressed with me because he gave me a tetanus shot, and I didn't even cry. I think that's one of the proudest moments in my life. But really, it is a good idea to wear boots because they can protect you from a myriad of things. Uh, there's a trade-off for me, though. I am safest when I can move quickly, nimbly, effectively, whatever you want to say. So there's a reason why I wear thin-soled shoes that have a lot of give to them. I know that I have to be more careful when I'm walking around the site, but I don't see the need to ever walk through a pile of demolition detritus. So yeah, I look at the ground more often than most people do, but it also means I'm aware of my surroundings and I can jump in and out of things very quickly and safely because that's how I work. I do have a pair of boots that I love and I wear them when it's appropriate, which means when it's very cold or when my ankles need a lot of extra protection. So for everyone thinks that I should wear boots, you're not wrong. For everyone who thinks I must wear boots, you're wrong. And for everyone who said unequivocally that I must wear boots because I will step on a nail, you're extra wrong because I didn't. Wouldn't it be better slash cheaper to use a bulldozer? Even though I already went through this in the first follow-up video, which clearly you did not watch, um, I'm gonna tell you the other side of it. Is it cheaper to bulldoze? It was suggested to me that I was spending so much money in garbage bags that it would have been cheaper to use a bulldozer. Let's see how that pans out. Bulldozers in my area rent for seven to eight hundred dollars per day. Best case scenario, that price includes an experienced operator and is done in a single day. Of course, it's likely that I would have to tear down the archway that leads into my property and possibly some of the fencing. Also, at least two of the trees that are very close to the house. Um, yeah, so I don't like that thought. But most importantly, everything that the bulldozer bulldozes has to then be disposed of. So if I'm just getting a bulldozer that has the big pushy thing on the front to just plow through things, that's one machine. But if I want the one that has a little bucket face, that picks things up and puts them into a dumpster or what have you, that's a second machine. Also, a bulldozer just pushes things over, and if I pushed over the entire house, 
I would then have to go through and cut it up. I would have to cut the roof to make sure that it fits into the dumpster or the whatever. And it means that everything that is there now has to be lifted, shoveled, moved. Like, you see what I'm saying, right? Also, any drywall that has mold on it has to be put in plastic bags before it's disposed of. This is per the rules of the sanitation department. So that means that now that I bulldozed my house and the roof has collapsed on it, uh, not only is it dangerous to be climbing over this detritus and I would have to wear boots, which I don't want to do, I would have to pull out all the drywall and put it into plastic bags anyways. So going back to the garbage bag debate, I used Husky heavy duty garbage bags, like contractor bags, because they're fantastic. Um, I get them at Home Depot and they are $26 per 50. I used less than 50. It cost less than $26. If I had gone the other way, a bulldozer would be at the minimum $700. There would be property damage, heightened risk of physical injury, excess work, cost of a new roof, cost of complete framing, and I still have to use garbage bags. You need a bigger hammer. I hear this so much. Usually it's from people who are critiquing my blacksmithing. <laughs> no, I don't need a bigger hammer. Um, I know that when we think of demolition, we almost always think of someone who's got a big sledgehammer and it's a two-hander and you swing it at the wall and it creates a perfectly round hole. That's not what I'm going for. I used a mini sledge to apply force to the lumber that I was trying to remove. Heavy hammerhead creates more force. Heavier hammerhead creates unnecessary force and, in my case, exhaustion. Swinging like that all day, it takes a lot of exertion and I'm trying to keep that exertion to a minimum because it's hot, blah blah blah, you've heard that all before. I produce the same effect with a mini sledge and it's much easier for me to wield. If you have the strength to swing a sledge, go for it. I don't. There's also a reason why I choke up on the hammerhead like that. It's because I have extremely limited upper body strength and very floppy wrists. Here's a thought. If you are not a tiny person, please consider the fact that a person who is smaller than you are might have to work in a manner that is different from the one in which you work. Two words. Saws all. It's one word. Saws all. And that's the brand name. I think what you were looking for was reciprocating saw. Uh, yes, I am aware of a reciprocating saw. I have three of them, but I don't like to use them and I never have. I've never felt comfortable with them. Uh, and I, again, came up with the same results as if I had used a reciprocating saw. So although I've never liked using them, I've just come across a brand new smaller version of a reciprocating saw and uh, I'm going to be trying it out so I'm really excited about that. Floor scraping tools slash you'll ruin your knees. <laughs> Lots of feelings about the tool I chose to use to scrape the tiles off my kitchen floor. Yeah, a multi-tool would have probably been better. I could have also used um, a hammer drill that had one of those little attachments. I could have used a stand-up floor scraper. I used what I used. It's already in the past. Um, yeah, it worked. I got it done. A reminder that I've never said that I do things the best way. I say I do it my way. But the biggest thing that people were upset about was seeing me squatting on the floor and them telling me, oh, you're gonna ruin your knees. You're gonna ruin your back. Your knees, your knees, your knees. This is an Asian squat. My people have been doing it for generations. I think I'll be okay. 
This one actually made me super happy. Who is Steve? Steve is an English blacksmith. He is a drinker of Scrumpy, and he is one third of the Fools with Tools podcast. But in the end, we are all Steve. Why doesn't anyone help you? There's a difference between needing help and not asking for it and not needing help and not asking for it. I will always ask for help that is needed, but if I can figure it out and do it on my own, I'm probably going to do that. I like working alone. I like figuring things out for myself. And again, this is all new. So if I have the chance to figure it out without asking someone to tell me the answer before I've even gone through the problem, I'm going to take the problem solving side of it every time. It's true that I have three other makers slash YouTubers that live in close proximity to me, but they're all working on their own things. We all help each other out when we're together and if it's needed, but mostly we work on our own. Your pinkies are crooked. Yeah, it's called clinodactyly and it's a birth defect. Do you feel good about pointing it out now? In the last follow-up video, I shared some of the stinky comments that I received and the resounding response was very encouraging, super supportive, and everyone agreed that I should not be bothered with bothering with the trolls. Here's the thing though, it doesn't bother me. I am the youngest of four kids and I worked in the service industry for 16 years. I've heard everything. Also. I was coming up in a time before the internet, a time when people used to degrade you right to your face and often at your place of business. Ah, the good old days. And one thing to keep in mind is that I have to actually care what you think to be insulted by you. But really, I always have a giggle writing responses to trolls. Um, I think it's also important that you lovely people with no malice in your heart, uh, get a little taste of what it's like to be the person on this side of the camera. It's not all tea and roses. There are some super stinky people out there. So while I won't belabor the point, I am going to read a couple of my favorite ones out loud to you. And if you want to know how I responded, you have to go find them in the comment section. Also, there's one comment that's a good one, and it makes me happy. I like her videos, but knit her personality. I am going to unsubscribe from this channel. When are you actually going to do some work? Why not use time lapse, lol? Bored here next video. You didn't bring any tools? Pure millennial. Stop apologizing and making eek faces while you do it. It's not cute. And good job, by the way. Can't wait to see the yard when cleaned up as well. She's small, but she destroy. The last thing that I want to share with you is the amount of comments that I received on my first follow-up video that said, don't apologize. I never do. If you notice, I've never apologized. And that's because I'm not sorry for anything that I do because I take the time to think about what I do. Okay, smugness aside, um, no, I, I don't apologize for taking a long time to put up a video or putting up a video that's not a build video because this is just what I'm doing. I'm choosing to share it with everyone and you can enjoy it or you can move on. It's really up to you, but I'll never apologize. <laughs> the vast majority of the comments that I've received on my videos have been super supportive. But more important than that, I'm seeing a lot of people, some men but mostly women, who are seeing what I do and thinking, hey, I bet I could do that too. People, this is why I'm here. I'm not teaching you anything. I'm reminding you of your own possibilities. I've said it here before and I will say it again. You don't have to know anything to start doing something. I am your proof of that. That's it. 
Follow me on Instagram if you want to see what I'm doing when I'm not working on the poop house. Become a supporter on Patreon if you want to see the behind the scenes and maybe drop a little coin into the tip jar. Thank you for watching and I'll leave you with this video of me feeding a squirrel.